You're very welcome back to the show now. The desire for happiness is a universal wish of humankind. I think everybody would agree on that. But is there a science behind achieving true happiness? Well, apparently there is. And my next guest is going to tell us all about it. She trained, tra trained sorry, under Marcy Shymoff, who contributed towards the book Sensation, The Secret. And now she wants to spread her knowledge and help us achieve true happiness. Pauline Rodish, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, so Elaine. tell me, happiness, it's, it's one of these intangible things that um, are peace, some people just born happy and are some people evolve into happiness. How does that work? I've often wondered. Yes, there's a science called uh, under the positive psychology um, idea that um, about over 20 years ago, they discovered that we have such a thing as a happiness set point. So we're either born dreary or cheery. Dreary or cheery. Well, that's <laughs> lovely. I wonder which one I am. But is that actually DNA based? Correct. Yes, they've, they've established that 50% actually of the set point is governed by our DNA, our yeah. genes. The remaining 50% is made up of 10% of our circumstances, you know, the jobs, security, home, relationships. So 10% is that's yes. all. Which wow. is where we, we generally tend to focus on changing. Yeah. We're always trying to change if I have a different job, if I have a different career, if I have a different partner, when I get married, when I get divorced, when I get retired, etc. Yeah. Um, we're always trying to focus on that. And then the remaining 40% is our ideas, beliefs, concepts, how we've grown up, what we've yeah. been exposed to, our environments. And the, the nurture goodness. aspect Correct. of it. Yeah. yeah. The learned behaviours. Mm -hmm. So the good news about that is that we're able, because of epigenetics, again... What's epigenetics now? This is the study whereby we're able to change our genes and our DNA through changing our thoughts and our beliefs. Why? How does that work? Well, basically, it's to the habits, new habits, learning new habits. So I suppose the happiness that I'm talking about here is happy for no reason. It's an independent state. So you just it's wake up in the morning, nothing's going on, nothing's happening. You just bounce out of bed and life is great. Well, that's what we're... Well, that's <laughs> well, kind well, of... We're aspiring, we're aspiring to, aspiring to do that. Aspiring to yeah. that. And it's possible. Yeah. We're aspiring. So the people that Marcy Shymoff interviewed, and she did say she found it hard to get 100 people in a population of 280 million <laughs> Americans. But she did find her 100 people that have this state and it is possible um, for any of us to develop it and it's through happiness uh, habits basically and she established that there are 21 habits essentially yeah. that we can learn wow because yes. everybody knows oh, i mean my uh, my lovely friend emma who passed away last year she often said there was drains and radiators everybody knows loads of drains but there's very few people that just radiate joy and um, there's 10 of us in my family and only one of them is i would qualify as that sort of person she's just a naturally happy individual and it's lovely and she's lovely to be around most of the time but that's <laughs> not the odds aren't good really when you think yeah. that's what it is yeah, but we can develop it yeah be so how do you do that you do it through um, changing your habits of thinking for a start, recognising that the past does not define you and recognising that if somebody else can do it, I can too. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my ethos. If somebody else can change, I can too. Yeah. So look, what we've all, it's not that we're putting um, a smiley face, uh, like a band-aid over yeah. something and you know, saying that that doesn't exist, you know, any, the past or the pain, but we're actually able to look at it differently, choosing to see things differently, mm. um, becoming more solutions focused in our lives, recognising that there's a gift often in, in our experiences in the past. I love this when I learned it. Um, tormentors can often be our greatest mentors and the word itself <laughs> is in the word tormentor. <laughs> and it's something that I always share with clients. You know, sometimes the people that have hurt us the most or circumstances mm. can teach us the most. It's just developing a mindset that I'm willing to learn how to, you know, look at things differently. Be, forgive the past, for example, having gratitude. Yeah, but you actually have to make a conscious decision to go yes. down this road. It, it's, a, it's not just a matter of, oh, waking up one morning no. saying you're going to do it. You actually have to yes. make steps and work on it. How do you do that? Well, I teach it myself personally yeah. through seminars and workshops. And as a coach, I weave it into my practice. I'm a hypnotherapist. So I have a lot of people coming to me with past issues that are causing them to have repeated patterning in their lives. So and that happens so often. It's yes. like, an, it's like uh, what's that, that phrase? Uh, the definition of madness, doing the same thing over insanity. and over again. Einstein, and, and yes. And insanity and, and expecting a different outcome. But like, I yes. know I'm guilty for that. Yes. So many people are. And you do the same things over and over again. Without you, but you need something to break the cycle. Well, so, you have to, you know, the, 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 the information is there, yeah. but information is useless unless we actually apply it mm -hmm. and it becomes transformational then. So information to transformation, it's actually applying it and it's creating the habits. It takes 21 days to create a habit. So you have to be really committed. People need to be absolutely committed and it's about taking responsibility.
responsibility. Mm -hmm. I heard some of you saying about responsibility earlier. It's, it's vital, it's the mm -hmm. foundation of everything, is recognising if I want something to change, it is up to me. If it is yeah. to be, it is up to me. Mm -hmm. Ten two-letter words. You yeah. know, it truly is. Because a lot of times I suppose we blame other people. We blame our yeah. job or we blame our relationship or we blame we have no money or we're, mm -hmm. the car is broken. It's all external things. Yeah. But if you're happy in yourself, these things won't matter as much. Is that what we're kind of saying here? Correct. Well, I mean, getting out of the blame game, that's yeah. absolutely totally saps us of energy, but it also mm. sabotages our potential mm. as well. So when we're in that blame, you know, we're really pointing the fingers and it, it, it's only going to keep us more stuck, in mm. fact. Um, then we're complaining, as you say, about society or parents or whatever, how we've been brought up, what we've been exposed to. If we are in that, and so many of us get caught in the blame and the complain, mm. and then we can turn it on ourselves mm. and shame ourselves and, you know, feel that, you know, we, we bring up feelings of guilt, I suppose, about things that we did or didn't do to yeah. get ourselves out of situations. But all in all, I just want people to know that it is possible for all of us to change. It just requires commitment. Mm. The information is there. The habits are there. The science is behind it to prove it. We can change our DNA completely. Yeah. And, and, and obviously not our physical DNA, but the DNA of our happiness. Is that what you're saying? DNA yeah. of yeah. happiness. Yeah, that's yes. Us. So that we get different results. Yeah. And what sort of impact does that have in your experience on people you've worked with? After 21 days, it's just three weeks can change your life. 21 days to change a habit. That's yeah. what it takes. That's what they teach us. And it's, it's re repetition is key because your mind is actually learning by repetition. Mm. <clears throat> Obviously, you're, you're, you're changing the neural pathways in the brain, yeah. hence the science again. So we actually, negative people have very strong, deep-rooted mm. neural pathways of negativity. So we have to completely combat that by putting in positivity. So positive thinking, mm. affirmations. I mean, I know people say it's a bit of woo-woo, but actually it works. Yeah. But it does. I mean, it, it, I suppose it goes hand in hand with things like mindfulness and hypnotherapy as well, as you said, yes, repetition CT, is the key yeah. and yes, yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff. I mean, if you are telling yourself the thing, same mantras over and over yes. again, it yes. has to seek it, seep, seep in in some way, we doesn't it? We become it. We become mm. it. So, you know, when I'm actually with clients, I mean, I ask them, what do you want? If you didn't have this problem, what's your ideal situation, mm. you know? And then we infuse that into the brain. So people learn that subconsciously because hypnosis allows it to seep in deep. Mm. So then they la learn that. But we can do that. We can self-hypnotise. In fact, we're always self-hypnotising, but most oh. of the time in a negative way. Mm. Really? Yeah, well, we're, when we say we're useless and we're a loser and we can't yeah. do this, that is a form of hypnosis because those mantras become embedded. Yeah. It's true about the 10 uh, positive thoughts needing to combat one Absolutely. negative thought or something. Well, it's an actual before. three to one actual ratio, believe yeah. it or not, because we're programmed for this negativity. It's actually called a negativity bias. Oh. So it's, it's there. The science, again, supports that. You know, it's like when you do hear yeah. um, nine compliments and then the one insult, we, we, we latch on to that. Yeah. yeah. We're just hardwired for negativity. Human, is that, are we, as yes. humans, hardwired yes. towards that? Negativity, 100%. So we have to work damn hard to get out yes. of it in the first place. And it comes from our caveman ancestors because back in the day, mm. I mean, we basically are, you know, the product of the ancestors that is the survival of the fittest, essentially. Right. They were the ones that were the nervous Nellies as Mar Marcy Shimon. Fight or flight. <laughs> and, the, and the fearful Freddies because yeah. they were always looking over their shoulders, essentially, for danger. But that's what kept them alive. Mm -hmm. So we're hardwired to look for danger, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but most of us are operating that way, the fight or flight response. Yeah. And we have the amygdala, which is the part yeah. of the brain is our alarm system goes off, you know, and yeah. it's just, you know, it causing pings. us. Pinging. <laughs> it's pings. It's pinging. It really does ping. You know. Um, you, you touched on it there, um, Marcy Shymoff. Um, she is renowned for being one of the main uh, uh, contributors to The Secret. If you've seen the documentary, oh. the audio book, the actual book yeah. itself. I mean, re like famous all over the world. She but you're the only person in Ireland who's... Currently. Currently. <laughs> yes. Well, she is, is training. Ta take, take it while you have it. Okay. <laughs> yes. um, that she's the only one, you're the only one in Ireland who's teaching her methods now. Isn't that correct? That How did that come correct. about? Well, I suppose because of... Uh, look, I've, I've been on the personal development journey for many, many years myself. You used to be a guard Changed. and what else? I was a guard, an air hostess, um, ran a food company with my husband, teach yoga and meditation, <laughs> uh, life coach and hypnotherapist, wow. and now a happiness trainer. Yeah. Wow, happy. I, I like the happiness trainer. So do I. Because like, the goal of all goals is to be happy. Is. Yeah, and I've chopped and changed career to find that happiness mm. myself. And you have yeah. that happiness now. But how did you come... Uh, happen upon this particular course and this particular method for you? Yeah, well, I was in my own search, um, just reviewing, I suppose, and researching clients that were coming to me with the hypnosis. Mm. Um, I just landed on Marcy's um, website. Mm. And then I joined her Year of Miracles, which is like a, a, a year-long coaching program. And then I became aware of this particular book, Happy For No Reason. So mm. I bought the book to help me with some of my own clients. And I remember saying, actually, I was out walking the woods in Monavay and Galway, where I live. I, could, I said, I wish this was a course. 
and literally a matter of months later, an email landed in, the, in, the, in my inbox saying that she was considering making it a certification. And so there's an interview process and um, it was, obviously she wanted people that were in transformational work already. Yeah. So um, there was an interview and then I got onto the course and so here I am. I'm still in her training, I still get coached by her. Wow, still. And her team, yes. Yeah. So it's very much hands-on. Absolutely, she's amazing. Uh, um, you also do seminars. Yes. How to be happy for no reason. Tell yeah, me well, about it's, that. It's, it's infusing that work, yeah. I have to say. I'm calling it Say Yes to Happiness, just putting my own little slant yeah. on it, if you we like. We won't rip off Marcy's stuff no. in case you get in trouble, but you know what I mean. Well, I mean, she's great because yeah. she gives you a little bit of, um, you know, length, or at least a little bit of flexibility insofar as if, if other expertise within her programme, you can obviously add mm. that in. So I tend to focus a lot on the mind and spirituality as well, yeah. coming from the yogic side of things. But um, the Say Yes to Happiness seminars are full day events. Mm -hmm. Around the very first one in Galway there in February was brilliant. So I have two coming up, one in Dublin on the 12th of May and the next one is on in Cork. Yeah. Your place, my, my, yeah, 25th my, of May. Back to God. Back yeah. to God. So it's, it's a full that. day. It's a full day basically of learning. It's very fun, interactive and transformational because I want people to feel it. So there's a lot of exercises that they will do. It's yeah. a day of coaching, you could say. You're in a room with like-minded people. And so from that point perspective as well, people learn. Yeah. And what, what do you think of mindfulness now? Because I mean, it's, it's become huge over the last number of years. I'm addicted to my Headspace app. Actually, my nephew is only five. He, he started listening to it every night because <laughs> his mother was on, listening to it because she was a bit stressed. And by default, that's how he goes to sleep now. Wow. Well, he deep breathes <laughs> and he's wonderful. Got, which I think is lovely. But it is. It's, I was wondering, is it healthy or not? He's aged <laughs> to be doing that. But is it a good practice to be doing something like that so young? And does it Help. App, I think so. I'm, I'm all in favour of it, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's so incredible. I think that is wonderful. I'm nearly envious that yeah. as a five-year-old. <laughs> I'm a little bit too. Uh, you know, to take the truth. By it. Because look, my, I have a 13-year-old son, and you know, he is my greatest teacher as well. Because yeah. you know, he, he he resists sometimes. So I ha always have to be mm. learning myself in order to yeah. be a better mother to him. But mindfulness. I mean. For example, yoga is probably the original of the mindfulness practice. Yeah. It's 5,000 years old. I think really living a mindful life is vital. That everything mm. that you do, waking up in the morning, just being taking a moment, a pause break. My business is called Just Pause for that reason, so that we hit the pause button frequently so that we can assess, review, and really check in on ourselves. How well are we actually doing? Mm. Mindfulness is crucial. Yeah. Even asking ourselves a question periodically tr throughout the day. Um, what could I do that would be more loving for myself right now? Might be just a drink of water, might mm -hmm. be to go outside in fresh air, it might be to sit down, might be to take a cat nap or something. But yeah. mm -hmm. that's mindful, you know, um, preparing your meal, is you can do it mindfully. Um, just everything, it just, you know, recognising that even people that antagonise us, mm -hmm. if we approach it mindfully, then we can really recognise, well, you know, that person's in their own, on their own journey, yeah. in their own process. Mm -hmm. They may not know what I know, I might know what they know, but you know, at the end of the day, we're all here just to evolve and to, to, to learn and to live the best life possible yeah. and to achieve happiness. <laughs> and that's all we all Internal, want. for no uh, reason. Uh, of course, so your business is? Just pause. Just pause. Dot .ie. Dot .ie. So all the details of everything, if anyone yes. wants to get in touch with their yes. seminars or yes. anything like that. And to be, I feel quite calm and zen now. Sorry, not making any sense, but you've a lovely aura about you. I feel quite Thank floaty. You. Thank you Thank so you, much Elaine. for joining us on the Appreciate show today. It. I'm going to often be meditating this evening myself now. <laughs> anyway, time for a quick break. But when we Thank come back, you. did you know hugging in the office could soon be banned? We've more on that in three. Yep.